Like many others, I believe the two lead contenders for the true author of the works of William Shakespeare are Edward de Vere and Francis Bacon. Even though these videos I post more often focus on de Vere being the writer, I've always believed that Bacon played an important role in the Shakespeare project and contributed to the writing. What he wrote and what de Vere wrote I have no idea, but I do believe that de Vere was the first to use the William Shakespeare pseudonym, though Bacon's name would appear in the work soon after. It all begins with the first two published works of William Shakespeare, Venus and Adonis, published in 1593, and Lucrece the following year. I've covered these poems and their dedications in other videos, including some of what I'm about to show here, but I recently figured out something that I had previously overlooked. First, I have to express the importance of John Dee's work, Monus Hieroglyphica, published 30 years before. It's almost like a guidebook for understanding how to decode the messages of the Shakespeare canon. Dee explains that the primary alphabets of the three languages are Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, and how we need to understand the numerical values of the letters and their shapes. Dee and Bacon were known cryptologists, and I think we can assume that Edward de Vere, like other Renaissance artists, understood that numbers were everything. Once you accept that these guys worked with codes and apply to Shakespeare what Dee's talking about here, a whole new world of understanding opens up. All right, we're looking at page one of Venus and Adonis. I've shown this before, but it needs repeating. It opens with this acrostic right along the left margin, the letters E-V-H-R-H. -H. I've explained in other videos that in classical Greek, H or Eta was sometimes used for the long vowel E. Applying that to the acrostic here, E-V-H-R-H -H spells E-V-E-R-E, -E, e vir Remember, D explained that Greek is one of the three languages of the primary alphabets, and by simply using a single Greek letter eta, Edward Veer was able to print his name. It's like a signature at the beginning of the work. I'm going to return to this later because I think there's more here in addition to Veer's name. Right now, let's check out where Bacon first makes his appearance. It's found at the beginning of Shakespeare's second published work, Lucrece. I've shown this before as well, but it was incomplete. The acrostic reads FR, the first two letters of Francis, and B, the first letter of Bacon. The problem is there's an L left over. This is where we focus on the shapes of letters. Notice the shape of the Greek letter for L, lambda, and how it resembles the shape of a letter A. All it's missing is the middle line, but the shape is still there. What's going on is, similar to how Edward Vere uses a Greek eta for a Latin letter E, Francis Bacon is using a Latin letter L to indicate a Greek lambda, which resembles the shape of a letter A. Replacing the Latin L with the Greek letter L, and now looks like F-R-B-A. Just like Edward Vere's name is printed at the beginning of Venus and Adonis, Lucrece begins with the first two letters of the name Francis Bacon. And it turns out he's not alone. Keep reading along the left margin, and we get the words and V-V. I've explained many times how Edward de Vere sometimes used double V to sign his name. The stanza ends with the last two letters AO. AO stands for Alpha Omega, which is another name for God. Altogether, this acrostic spells FRBA and VVAO. The thing is, we don't read this from top to bottom. It's meant to be read in reverse. When we do, it reads, God, De Vere, and Francis Bacon. If you've been following these videos, you know I've shown many examples, particularly in the sonnets, of a message that reads, God, De Vere, and Rosie Cross, or Gold Rosie Cross. And here we have God, De Vere, and Francis Bacon, who is believed to have been leader of the Rosicrucians.
There are rosy cross codes in Lucrece, explained in video 40, which is interesting because this is nearly 20 years before the Rosicrucians formally announced themselves. We find similar codes on page 1 of Venus and Adonis, which brings us back to Edward Vere's name. Because the Lucrece acrostic had more than a single name, I wondered if there was more going on with the left margin here. Following Edward Vere's name are the letters S-A, but I couldn't figure out what that would mean here. If you know what these letters were an abbreviation for in the 16th century, please let me know in the comments. Another idea I had is, if we instead continue reading down the edge of the page, there happens to be two letter T's, which are the same initials found in the sonnets and explained in video 55 in the addendum. If we keep going, following E. Vere and the two T's are the letters S.M., which is the French abbreviation for Sa Majesté, which means His Majesty. I assume this abbreviation was used in the 16th century, but I don't have access to documents that might show it. So far, reading the acrostic upwards along the edge of the page, it's His Majesty 2T Edward Vere. The remaining letters are V-A-I-A, -A, pronounced Baia in Greek and Baia in Latin. Searching the internet, I found out that Baia can mean palm branch, which is interesting because the god Apollo was born beneath a palm tree, and Edward de Vere was referred to as Phoebus, another name for Apollo by contemporaries like Thomas Nash. But also, the word bay and bay leaves comes from the word Baia. The word is also spelled V-A-G-I-A, and you can see here, it's a name for the bay laurel. The bay laurel is a shrub, but it can also refer to the wreath or crown of bay leaves worn as a symbol of honor. Here are a couple portraits of Shakespeare with the crown of bay leaves. Now the thing is, the crown of bays didn't just honor athletes and poets of the highest order. There was a time when they were also used to crown kings. If these letters, V-A-I-A, -A, are referring to the bay laurel, and we read this acrostic upwards like we did with Lucrece, it's Baia S-M-T-T-E Vir. This translates to bay laurel, which can mean a crown, and it's placed above the French initials for His Majesty, 2-T Edward Vir. If I've interpreted this correctly, it fits with other examples in the Shakespeare works where I keep finding codes or references to Edward de Vere being a king. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Maybe here it's spelling out that he was the king of poets, but it's a message I've found so many times that it's beyond coincidence. And this might be the earliest example. I'm 100% confident that the first stanza of Lucrece, read upwards, reveals the message, God, De Vere, and Francis Bacon. I'm also certain that Edward Vere's name is at the beginning of Venus and Adonis, but are we supposed to focus only on the first stanza and read the letters S-A beneath his name? If you're watching this and can tell me what these letters would mean here, please let me know. Or do we instead read the first two stanzas upwards and get the French abbreviation for His Majesty, followed by the sonnet's initials 2T and the name Edward Vere? Also, is Baia, the word beginning the third stanza, part of the message? This word is used now for the bay laurel, but I couldn't find out if it was used for the same in the 16th century. If you know if it was, again, please let me know. Whichever's the case, Codes have been found in Shakespeare for years, and obviously they can't all be true. These names here, though, I think are legitimate. For the people who say that codes are nonsense, ask yourself, what are the odds that the two men most commonly believed to have written Shakespeare would have their names at the beginning of the first two works attributed to Will Shakespeare of Stratford? 
What are the odds that I keep finding the message, God, Veer, and Rosie Cross, over and over again? And here, Lucrece begins with God, De Vere, and Francis Bacon, who many believe was leader of the Rosicrucians. This face of Will Shakespeare is an obvious mask. These are the two men responsible for the Shakespeare project, most likely with the help of others who played a smaller part. Now, if I have to give the name William Shakespeare to one person, it's Edward de Vere, but I believe Bacon also used the name. I think it's a mistake to support only one as the sole author of everything, and the Oxfordian and Baconian camp should work together on answering the Shakespeare authorship question. And one of the ways we accomplish this is by examining the shapes of letters and knowing their numerical values. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video, and if you found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up. I'll have another posted soon.